Welcome to part two of my tier ranking all the books that I read in 2021. Um, I have not in the interim figured out any or a lot more than I had figured out before about how to screen record things better. So we're gonna just keep adding and we're gonna do our best. <laughs> and um, off we go. Let's do the rest. And I'm never gonna do tier ranking again because I hate tier rankings. <laughs> So, off we go, let's do the rest. Okay, so where were we? Uh, the Howling Dark is immaculate, um, as is the whole Sun Eater, as you will, as I think I said last time. 100,000 Kingdoms, ooh, between immaculate and would read again. I would definitely read it again. It's definitely at least that level. Is it immaculate? Mm, maybe? I'm gonna say yes it is. I feel generous. I am legend. Um, I'm I was this was picked for me to read for my patrons, and um, it was interesting to read it as a history, as a student of the genre. But um, like, it's very very dated, so adequate I would say. Infernal, I barely remember anything about. I just remember being very disappointed. I think it was a. I think the beginning was very compelling because like the per the character like wakes up and doesn't know who he is or what he is or where he is. And I thought that was handled very, very well because that could be a tricky thing to do. But then after that, when we actually get into the meat of the plot and we kind of know who we are now and what we're doing, it completely lost me. I don't get how you can do so well with the tricky part and then fail at the normal part. I have like, originally I don't get it did not mean what I mean here, but just whatever, there are no rules. Inheritance of Arcadia Divina, I thought was entirely adequate. I did not hate it, but I did not think it was amazing. Jamaica Inn, I would read that again. I've been really enjoying reading Daphne Tamori. Jamaica Inn was I think my least favorite, but I really enjoyed that. A Lady Midnight was, I'm kind of putting it in I don't get it because I didn't hate it, but like the way that people talk about the dark artifices about how Sandra Clare, like she's finally like, this is the best thing she's ever written. Like, this is it. And so I was like really hyped for it. Cause like, I like the infernal devices. So I was like, if everyone says the dark artifices, like is truly now like her final form. I'm, I think the infernal devices was better. So I don't get it. Last Argument of Kings would read it again. And I will be in March. The last final girl, why? Why would you write it in that format? Why would you torture me with that? Why? The Last House on Needless Street, um, it's more than adequate, but I don't know if I would read it again. I guess I would read it again. Why? I guess we'll put it there, it's fine. The Last Seance, I would definitely read that again. I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed it. It's short stories, not a full novel, and Agatha Christie's really hit and miss for me, but I really had a good time with that. Then The Lesser Devil, um, I would read that again. It's not immaculate like the rest of the sun eater. This is the short story or the novella that takes place like elsewhere, but during the chronologically during the, during the events of Empire of Silence. Lesson in Vengeance, I don't get it. This was like quite hyped as like YA Dark Academia and like a very good YA Dark Academia. And I don't think it was very good YA or very good Dark Academia. So I don't get it. Then The Lost Apothecary was entirely adequate. It was what I expected. I got what I expected. I don't really, haven't really thought about it much since. <laughs> Macbeth? Why? No, what, you know what? Hours of my life that I will never get back. Because why is that book so long? Who let Joan Esbo retell Macbeth? Did he, did he have it assign a thing saying he'd actually ever like read Macbeth? Because, sir? Sir. Macbeth is like one of the shortest plays. Why is your book this long and this offensive and this stupid? I just... Should have DNF'd it. The actual Macbeth would read it again. It's not my favorite Shakespeare play. It's not even one of my favorites. It's a good one. And I would read it again. Uh, which hob is this? The Mad Ship? Yeah, the one I just read. Oh, Mad Ship. Is it Immaculate? Is it? I'm gonna say it is. Like, it's on the fence between would read it again and Immaculate, but it's, it's pretty, pretty good. Malby Rising? I don't know if I'll read it again. I did really like it, but I'm gonna have to say it's adequate. It's it's on the high end of adequate, but I don't think I would read it again. Not in any hurry anyway. Marvelous Light, I don't get it. I It was my fault that Blades and Bodice Rippers added this to what we were reading in December. And um, well, in the first place, I don't understand why it was pitched the way it was. And it was not released by um, an, a romance imprint. 
if it had been released by a romance imprint and pitched as a romance, I would have been like, yeah, no, no, I'm not gonna read that. But it was pitched as like a fantasy with a strong romantic current, as Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell meets Red, White, and Royal Blue. And it is, no, it is just a romance and not a very good one in my opinion. So I don't get why people like it and I don't get why it was sold like that. Mary Shelley Club, I don't know if I would read it again. I did enjoy it and I, I didn't enjoy it very much to begin with, but I ended up enjoying it. So, adequate. Master of Gin was painfully adequate. I liked it better than the novellas, but it's still, it's, it's so far from hitting the mark so far from living up to the potential of that premise that I'm like, yikes. Merchant of Venice, would read it again. I have revisited that play multiple times. Middle game, I don't get it. I feel like that book is really hyped and the cover is really cool. Um, it was, it, it, I liked it in the beginning, but boy did it go off the rails. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I don't know why I said it like that was adequate. I had higher expectations for it. It's a little bit style over substance, but it was fine. The Monstromologist was likewise. I liked it better than Miss Peregrine's, but um, I mean it's like a, it's a pretty horrifying YA mystery thriller in like a historical setting. I had a good time with it. I really, really did. Uh, I liked it, but I wouldn't read it again. My Cousin Rachel. I would read that again. That was really, really good. I, I think I said at the time that it might be my favorite Du Maurier, but also it was the only one that I read without already knowing the plot, because I had seen adaptations of Jamaica Anna and Rebecca already before reading it. So now that I've had more time to sit on it, I might like Rebecca more than my cousin Rachel, but I did really, really like uh, my cousin Rachel. Nevermore! I would read that again, and I probably will, in anticipation of the release of the next one. Neverwhere. <laughs> Neverwhere. Nevermore. Is this alphabetical? Is alphabetical, isn't it? That's the order we're doing this in. How long did it take me to figure that out? <laughs> Neverwhere. Uh, I have read it twice, and I will probably read it again. Um, I actually, it's one of my least favorite games. I like it better than Stardust, but I don't love Neverwhere. But I would read it again. New Boy. I was. It was adequate. I think there's only gonna be one Hogarth Shakespeare that I'm gonna put higher than adequate. Um, I was quite let down by it, both because the book itself, like, it almost did did a good job at retelling Othello, but then it made some really bizarre choices. And honestly, like, I think a much more successful retelling of Othello that does the thing of setting it at a school with students is the movie O oh, from the 90s than this. It was, it was fine. The Night Circus, I don't get it. I don't understand why people love it. Talk about style over substance that is just, the whole book is just like a wish list of like a fun magical venue that this author wants to be in. And then it was like, oh, I guess I should have a plot in there somewhere. Maybe a little bit. And Northern Wrath was painfully adequate. I was really hyped for that. Cause it's a, again, a Norse Viking type thing, but it's like the same problem I had with Forever King where it's like Vikings, but there's like gods actively like roaming around participating in the story. And I just, that really irks me. I don't even know why. I don't even have a good reason for why. It just does. Nosferatu, I liked it, but it was way too long, which is why I like, maybe I'd read it again. That's why I wouldn't, is because it's too long. Like, but the story itself, like I would revisit that, but it's so fucking long. I guess if enough time passed, I guess I'd read it again. <laughs> it's <laughs> a grudging would read it again. One by one, my Ruth Ware, I really enjoyed it, but I wouldn't read that again. Othello, I love it. It's immaculate. It's my favorite Shakespeare tragedy. Outlawed was adequate. I'm about to run out of space again. Over the Woodward Wall. Um, I don't get it. I mean, I get it. Like at first, I really liked it, and it's like a in middle game. There's like a children's book that they reference as existing, and this is that children's book, except that it's not a children's book. It's a series, which I didn't know when I started it, and it seemed odd that it would be since like there is a book called Over the Woodward Wall that is referenced in Middle Game, not a series. So it feels like a cash grab to me. But yeah, I, I liked it to begin with. It had this like whimsical Alice in Wonderland nonsense kind of quality, but it just, it very much went off the rails. We Meet on Vacation was adequate. Not nearly as good as Beatrice. I'm running out of space again. 
What am I gonna do? I read too many books. Okay, um, Persepolis. Oh, that was the end of the Ryuria revelations. Uh, I don't even know if it's adequate. I guess it's adequate. Good, in my opinion. Portrait of a Scotsman. Why? Why would you think Weathering Heights is like an idyllic romance? Why would you tell the story the way that you did? Why? That would have gone on my worst of the year if I hadn't filmed it before reading it. Practical Magic. I don't get it. That is so well loved. There is just like, there's literally not a plot. People complain about First Law not having a plot. Practical Magic doesn't have a plot. The Queen's Gambit was adequate. I enjoyed my time with it, but like I wouldn't read it again. Radical Act of Free Magic isn't as good as Declaration, but it I would read that again. Uh, Raven King, I would read that again, for sure these. Because I would, as I said, I would read, or I guess I said that in part one, that I would read the whole Raven Cycle again. Guess we're gonna make this tinier again? Jesus Christ. Okay, we're nearly there. <laughs> um, Red Country, I would read it again. It's one of my least favorite in the first law, but I will read it again this year, so <laughs> happy lied if I say I wouldn't read it again. Redwall, I would read that again. I loved revisiting Redwall. I read a bunch of the Redwall books when I was a kid, and that's why I read it again now. Rain and Ruin, I would read that again. Bethany picked that for me as well. Um, so of the four, it was like two no's and two yeses, because I put, uh, yeah, I think of the books you picked for me, uh, two of them went in why, and <laughs> two of them went in would read again. So I think that's a win, right? Have we not gotten to any of the ones that, Alan, oh, Guns of the Dawn, Alan picked that for me, and Guards, Guards. Okay, we have done some, some Alan picks. Then, oh God, it's so small that I can't even see what this is. The Return of the King? The Return of the King. Uh, it's pretty immaculate. I, probably thanks to Andy Serkis, but that was Ship's Kiss. Aurora One Zone was uh, adequate, I guess. It seems high, considering what else I put in adequate, but I, could, I didn't have a huge problem with anything in it. I just thought it was boring. <laughs> Royal Assassin, Emergent. Oh. Night Eyes, we are pack. Ruin and Rising, uh, would read it again is a bit high, <laughs> but I would read it again, because I would read all the Christian books again. The Secret of Chimneys was adequate, it wasn't like, Great crispy, but I didn't hate it. It was fine. Selena Sends <laughs> was adequate. Sorry. Shadow and Bone, I would read it again. <laughs> uh, Shadow and Summer, mm, I don't get it. I don't get why I love it so much. I was pretty bad, pretty stupid. <laughs> uh, Shadow of the Torture, same with the uh, with uh, Cloud the Conciliator. Like, I think I need to read it again. <laughs> There's a lot to the Book of the New Sun. In fact, I read. That's in here somewhere. I think we're gonna get to it pretty soon. It starts with an S. The Sword of the... No, I already did Sword of the Lictor. Did I? No. Yeah, anyway, the Sword, yeah, the sword of the Lictor is right here. I read that pretty quickly, because uh, I would read, a, had a lot of books to get through in that month, and I definitely would need to reread that, and I kind of just want to go back to the beginning of the book, The New Sun. And, like, because I want to read the fourth one, but before I do, I think I want to, like, marathon it. Like, I want to read the first three and then immediately read the fourth one. Shout out what was lost. Um, I don't get it. I don't get why people love the series. And I don't get why you would use a beautiful orange cover for such a not great book. Shadow of Night. I mean, does it go in why or hours? I kind of want to put in hours of my life. It was pretty painful to get through that. And I still read the third one because of the show. Because I've read the book before watching the show for every season. This is the Discovery of Witches series. Um, so like I, I knew I'd hate the third one. I was like, maybe I, maybe Elle will hate it less. Hated it worse, it's been progressively worse. I, nah, I'll just put it in why, because like, honestly, the whole time I was reading it, I was like, why are these people so dramatic? Why is this like weirdly anachronistic? Why, 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 why? <laughs> Sharp ends, would read it again, and I will. <laughs> Ship of Magic, um, pretty immaculate. It's gonna go on immaculate. <laughs> oh, okay, so Shylock is my name is my favorite of the Hogarths. And Shylock is my name is kind of like if Joe Abercrombie wanted to retell the Merchant of Venice is kind of the five. So I thought that was pretty good. Um, I would read it again. Tejan Storm, I will read it again. <laughs> uh, the Silent Patient, um, it was adequate. Like, I think it's a decent thriller, but uh, it's, uh, it's got a lot of flaws. Like I enjoyed my time with it. Like the experience of reading it was an enjoyable one, but it's not very good. Six of Crows, immaculate. <laughs> Skull Degree Pleasant, um, I would read that again. The Skull Degree Pleasant books are just like really fun. Skyward, it's not immaculate, but I would read that again for sure. 
I had a really good time with Skyward. Then Small Spaces by Katherine Arden was like really, really disappointing. I don't get how the author of Bear and the Nightingale, and then this book that also is quite hyped. I don't understand how that was so not pretty. <laughs> Um, it wasn't good. Starless Sea, I definitely don't get it. I don't get why people love it. I liked it even less than Night Circus. Seriously, this lady needs to just be a party planner. Stone of Tears, I kind of want to put it in Immaculate, but I feel like people will kill me if I do. I really love Stone of Tears. But we'll just put it and read it again because I'm about to read it again. Don't hurt me. Stone Sky, uh, I would read it again. I think fifth season, I would put it in Immaculate. Um, Stone Sky, I still get five stars. I think The Broken Earth is Immaculate, but the individual installment can't quite put in Immaculate. Storm of Swords, Immaculate. Strange Case of Lock and Daughter was totally adequate. Not nothing to write home about. <laughs> Sword of Kaigen was adequate. Nothing to write home about. <laughs> Magnus Chase, I don't get. I don't get the love for Rick Riordan or for Magnus Jace or by extension for Percy Jackson because I'm assuming Percy Jackson is pretty similar in vibes and tone. I just, I don't get it. Um, and then this is The Sword of the Lictor, um, would read again slash need to read again. This is so tiny. I, I want you to be impressed with my ability to read what this says. <laughs> um, this is, oh, Terran Wanderer. Um, yeah, I would read for Dane. The whole of Perdane again, so it's just gonna all go and would read again. Uh, Tenant Wildfell Hall would read again. Kind of want to put in Immaculate because it's kind of the best Bronte book that I've ever read. Immaculate seems like slightly too much for it, but I'm gonna put it there. What the hey? And Bronte doesn't get enough love, so here for now you're going in Immaculate, ma'am. The Ancestor was adequate. It was kind of a weird twist, <laughs> and yeah, it was it was interesting, but it was it was kind of weird. The yeah, X-Hex, why? Why, why, why would anyone want to read that? <laughs> the Gunslayer was adequate, especially after like, I might even put it in would read it again, because I would read it again. I, I, like people really prepped me to hate that. And that was probably like, it probably benefited a great deal from those low expectations, but like I enjoyed it. And I think being more, because I do plan to go on with the Dark Tower, and I think revisiting the Gunslinger would also be rewarding. So anyway, the heroes, I'm gonna read it again. <laughs> the Ivies um, was adequate. I had a good time with the Ivies, but it wasn't groundbreaking or anything. The Maidens, likewise, was adequate. It had a lot of, it had a lot of problems, to be frank, but it was... I had a decent time reading it. The Shining? I don't get it. That book is so long, and it really kind of lost me there towards the end. So I don't I don't get it. And it definitely wasn't scary. The Tempest is adequate. Definitely not one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. The Wolf. Read that twice in 2021. Is immaculate. Things in jars. Adequate. Oh the third chimpanzee. Kind of forgot I read that. I would read that again. It's a little dated, so the facts in it are a little bit out of date, but it's very interesting. Thunderhead, I would read that again. And I kind of Maybe you want to read Scythe and Thunderhead again before going on with the toll? I don't know. It's still pretty fresh. Tagana? I don't get it. Uh, my patrons know why. Trigger warning? I would read that again for sure. Some very good stories in there. Trouble with Peace is immaculate. Turn of the Key? I would read that again. I really enjoyed that. The Two Towers? I would read that again. Unbroken? I don't get it. Vespertine? I really hated that. Um. Uh, get it. <laughs> uh, we have always lived in the castle. I, I enjoy that. I don't know if I'd read it again though, so I'm gonna put it inadequate. Widow of Rose House. I didn't hate it. Didn't love it. Winter of the Witch. I'm gonna read that again. Then, oh Jesus Christ. Um, this is The Winter's Tale. The actual Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare is adequate. It's a weird one. Uh, Wintertide by Michael J. Sullivan, which is the second to last Ray Area book, is adequate. Wisdom of Crowds is immaculate. Witch Mark is is adequate. And Witch's Heart was a little less than adequate, if I'm honest, but we'll put it inadequate. The, I kind of forgot I read this, but um, When the World Ends or Where the World Ends was actually pretty good. 
I don't think I'd read it again, so adequate. Wondersmith, I would for sure read again and I will. And last but not least, Year One by Nora Roberts was adequate. I was trying to go faster there at the end because my camera was about to run out of battery and then just as I was beginning my outro, uh, it ran out of battery. <laughs> Um, so let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about what I read in 2021, about how I ranked it, um, whatever you want to let me know. <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays. Other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.